That has been running for a long time. <sighs> it's hot. I'm hot. It's still not done. So I thought I'd do a quick update uh, on how things are going at the moment. I can't remember exactly where I left it uh, because I was working on it last week and then I had to go and pick up a Picasso which had been passed on to me. And I'd done something to my hand, which is healing really slowly, but still, hmm. um, yeah, I'd, uh, I, did the, I did the video where I was just basically blogging to my phone about what I'd done. I, don't, I can't even remember what I've recorded since, but I thought I'll update things now to show where we are. So the front of the car is still off. The cooling system is filled with Evans prep fluid. So it's now running a prep fluid, which is going through the cooling system and will basically collect water, if you like. And then the idea is you run it in there for a while, it soaks up all the water and then you drain it all out and it pulls the water out with it. That's kind of the idea. Um, there are a lot of nooks and crannies in this. So uh, I don't know what the odds are of me getting all the water out. I, ha I do have a refractometer so I can measure the water content uh, once I've done it because I am going to convert this to waterless coolant, I've decided, um, with all the, well, with all that horrible plastic, if I can remove the pressure in the cooling system, that's a good thing. Um, I've had it running a long time there. I had the throttle wedge down 2000 RPM for about 20 minutes, something like that. Uh, long enough to get the cooling fans to come in, which I've not seen before, so that's good. So uh, it is bloody hot now. The header tank, in theory, I should be able to, if I've got loads of water in, this won't work. <laughs> just, <laughs> just removed it. <laughs> it didn't even hiss. Okay, so that's worked pretty well. So I think if I drain all this out and then put the coolant in, I think I'll be all right. Because if there was a lot of water left in it, obviously the water has got hot and will have expanded and that will try and find its way out. But I pulled the cap off and the level just went up a tiny bit. So that's good. Um, so all the coolant hoses are in. Uh, I still need to fix the boost pipes that broke the other day. Um, I need to put the nappy bag back on the front. Um, the airbox has got to go back in, which is annoying because it's got to come back out again because I want to change the gearbox oil or transmission fluid again before I go away. So I'm going to have to put it back in and then take it back out. A um, couple of braces to go on. You know, under the bonnet, it's not too bad. There's not a huge amount left. And then it's the bumper and everything like that. And then I've got to drive it and make sure it's okay. The other thing I've got is uh, I've got a snapped fixing in the top of the rad pack there. Um, I do actually have a, I did have one in this side as well, but I managed to extract it, but that one is not coming out. Um, and this is fiberglass, and there are captive nuts in there, and they're just spinning. Ideal. So really, I just want to get the captive nut out, and I'll just put a nut and bolt through it, but I've got to try and get it out without melting anything. So I think I'm gonna to have to grind the top of the, um, remain of the, the remains of the head of the bolt down, and then grind the top of the captive nut off, and then just kind of like push it through the bottom. And this side here, I did get it out, but that's now spinning. So in theory, I might make sense just to get rid of that one as well. Figure that one out. But uh, yeah, condensers in, plumbed in, pressure switch is reconnected on the bottom of it. Um, so all the hoses are in. Hopefully, hopefully, broken the back of it. So as you can see, I've got two plastic pipes here which have snapped. So what I need to do is figure out what the diameter of all these pipes is. 4.7 mil. Of course it's not five or four, it's 4.7. So I've got some, what have I got that's 4.7 mil? Uh, it's a, oh, 4.5 mil. I've got some citron conifer pipe. 4.5 mil for the BXs, and it can put the uh, the flare in there as well because that's just like that's a flare just like on a Citroen hydraulic hydraulic pipe. Lovely. There we go. That is a, a bit of 4.5 conifer pipe using a flare for 
Citroen, uh, well, brakes, because that's for an ABS braking system. So what I need to do now is bend it into the shape of one of these, and then make another one, and do the same again, and then decide whether to keep the ends on. I might, I might chop the end off, I'm not sure yet. And yeah, that's all I need to do, and then connect. I'm gonna have to keep those, I think. I'll have a look and see where they go, but it might be that they disappear down the back of the engine and I end up like gently having to tease rubber back onto those. Although, 08, 02, 08, 06. Wow. Um, yeah, so I'll have a little think. Anyone asking why am I not just attaching a piece of rubber from there over to there, I did consider that, but I don't know what these pipes actually do because the descriptions of them are just some people say breather pipes some people say boost pipes some people say vacuum pipes i don't know i suspect they're vacuum and if they are vacuum because they've not got any fixings on to hold them on so i'm guessing they're vacuum and if they are vacuum and i put a piece of rubber all the way through although this is supposed to be vacuum hose it's there's a chance it would suck in on itself and seal up and i don't want that I want all my boost, so I'm gonna, at the end of the day, they're rigid for a reason. It's just they've made them out of something crap, not something useful. So I've done the pipes, whatever they are at the back there. I haven't put the airbox back in yet because the next thing I'm going to have to do is sort out this uh, these broken fixings at the front. Um, they need, uh, well, it's going to need grinding out basically, which means I'm going to have to bung up all the holes. Oh, a Stanley knife, Stanley blade. Hmm. Uh, um, gonna have to bung up all the holes that things could fall into because when I was revving the engine earlier on the whooshing and hissing was intense and I thought if something went down that pipe it would be bad so I'm going to uh, block that up first and then a bit of trim in there I can't do much with this cooler down here there's a I think it's an LDS cooler at the front here because the um when I turned the key the other day, I didn't have the radiator fan bolted in and it spooled up and because it was basically a propeller, it shot forward and it kept Swiss cheesing this cooler and I couldn't do anything with it and I turned the power off and it kept doing it because ECU. So I'm going to um, leave that because if I try and bend all those fins back out, I might break it. So, and then I've unbolted a headlamp. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've removed a fixing under here that I didn't need to remove, so I'm going to sort that out. And then hopefully, put the bumper back on. So you can see the problem I've got. Captive nut here, captive nut here, here, fine. This one here, spins. No good. Um, I can just about grab it on the underside, but 
you can't on the other one, and the other one's got a snapped off bolt in it anyway. So I figured the best thing to do is to cut them both out. Well, that's pretty ugly. But it's out. So I can just put a nut and bolt in there now. It's actually um, thicker underneath. So it's kind of, there's a ridge underneath. So it's actually much thicker than it looks there. It's about, about six mil thick actually. And it's thick as point. So it'll be fine. Because the alternative is to have nothing. So as you can probably see, I've rubbed down and painted the bits that those brackets sat on because they were a bit minging. So that will go there, and that will go there. And that one's about right. I'm just going on where they were marked before. Kind of. Right, so I just need a nut and a bolt to go in there and there. I can get, yeah, I can get in there, that's good. Right, there's a nylock nut, no, 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 nylock nut on the back of these, and it's all stainless. So hopefully, it won't rust up again. That's the theory anyway. I'm, I'm sure these noises are entirely normal. There we go. Going nowhere. And then this thing has to go on. Somehow. Right. Yeah, no. Probably a bit more to it than that. Those little rubber flap things, I think they they slot into it. There we go. And then bonnet release cable. Ah. Ah. Lovely. I've made some progress. Um, I've been working on the back of the front bumper. As you can see, this is the business end of a C6. You might look at it and think, well, there's a hell of a lot going on here. That looks horrible, but it's actually <laughs> ingenious because you've got a connector there and a connector there and a washer pipe there. And that's it. You plug the bumper into the car and then all this stuff is in that loom. The bumper has its own loom, which to be fair, might be fairly standard practice now. I don't know. Um, a lot of this was loose. So these clips here were worn. So I'll clip them back in place and then encourage them to stay put with some glue. The splitter was well and truly knackered. So it's got a load of glue on the back of it. This is all hidden, you can't see any of this when it's fitted to the car. And then you've got some nuts here, some stainless fixings. They might actually be slightly visible. <laughs> we'll have to see. But uh, they can't go around the other way because the, um, what's it? This thing sits in there. So yeah, they're because none of this was bolted on, this was all loose, which isn't ideal. So the uh, upper grille panel is in and the bumper is ready to go on and when the bumper's on and fixed and fitted and everything like that i'm really not that far away from being able to drive it so 
that's probably what I'll try and do, test it, make sure it works. But I've still got the prep fluid in there. I've still got the uh, Evans prep fluid in. So the question is, do I try and drain that out now before the bumper come, goes on, because the access is much better, or do I wait and drive it? I don't think I need to drive it. I, I honestly don't. I um, ran it earlier on, and I had, I had it bloody hot. I had the fans cutting in and out. They never do that. Do you know, I think it might actually make more sense to um, to do it now, to, to just go through it and just change the coolant now and get it done. So normally, you would uh, try and save this stuff, but I've already used this stuff I've put in a few times, so I'm going to call this life expired now. Yeah, it's going everywhere. There you go. Ugh. Yeah, it's going to have so much, like, crud in it. Huh. There's not a lot coming out of that. All right, get all the bleed points open. I must have put about nine litres in this. And nine litres has not come out. How much of this is going in the bucket? I can't see. I'm guessing not a lot. Luckily, it's not toxic at all. It's just, yeah, it just washes away with the rain. And I can't flush it through with water either, because then I'd have to put it in again. That would be dumb. Well, that's largely empty there. Let's go in through. Oh God, don't break that. I swear to God, if this broke, I would go mental. Ah! Damn it. I think we're getting there. Different kind of green, really. Well, you get the idea with that. This one's already flowing coolant back, that one not yet. Now we just gotta like wait forever for it to get warm enough for the thermostat to open. There you go, that's bled. Right, heat of circuit is bled. But basically now, we just need to get it hot enough for the thermostat to open. I want the fan to cut in, cut out. Show that the heat is working, everything like that, and you know you're pretty much bled in. I'll carry some coolant around with me as well. Problem is this thing takes forever to get hot. I mean, not literally forever, but if it did, it wouldn't need coolant. You will notice the bumper's back on. Uh, this isn't, well, I didn't deliberately not film it. Uh, the battery ran out on the camera. So poor planning on my part. Um, not that interesting, really, putting that back on. Big, flimsy piece of plastic with many fixing clips and screws. Um, mind you, it's kind of debatable how interesting this is in general. All right, time to shut you up a bit. Hmm. 
Yeah, it does make a bit of a difference. Well, I'll just check the oil quick before I wrap up. But I think this needs a good run. It also needs some fuel because it managed to use about two bars just sat here revving. Somehow, I don't know how, but... Oh, she's full. I'm gonna change the oil, actually. That'll be something to do later this week. It's not looking too bad under here, is it? There we go. Bit of BS spray and we are away. Well, I reckon... I reckon I'm done. This is where the bonnet doesn't fit and I didn't line it up properly. We're all right. Ah, it's perfect. Ah, right, my niece drew this. Does that look like me? Yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs>